So there's an area of research called ghosts. Um, the original research was ghosts in the executive suite because it was explaining how the leaders of today are affected by those childhood impressions. But my colleague at MIT, um, Professor Deborah Ancona, wrote a really amazing article in Harvard Business Review about ghosts in your neural architecture from your childhood and how they affect you, you know, whatever you're doing, whoever you are. Um, and identity is one of them. So actually there are, the other things are the values that your family held or your social structure, you know, when you were growing up held, boundaries that were held in, in your family and your social structure, secrets that were kept, roles in the family and identification, which in childhood tends to be comments like, oh, you're just like your father. Um, and so those things are quite intertwined. So for example, if you have a secret in your family and the common examples are, you know, someone that was an alcoholic or someone that was gay that wasn't talked about, then you start to program shame around those things. And so that affects your identity. So the secrets that were kept in your family affect your identity. The boundaries that were kept in your family. So some families have a really open house and people can just drop in and they can stay over. Um, they can just join a meal unplanned. And some families, everything's very planned and, you know, it has to be like invited in advance and kind of, um, you know, not spontaneous. Again, those things also affect your identity because it's your ability to be flexible and spontaneous versus your, you know, inability to function in a world where that may be happening. Um, and roles obviously also affect your identity. So let's say now you're in the workplace and your role as a child was to be the messenger. So let's say your parents had a lot of arguments and didn't speak to each other and said things like, Andre, go and tell your mother, you know, whatever. Um, that's also going to play out in your adult identity. Um, and you're absolutely correct. You mentioned a few things, but in my research, what I found is that the inability or frustration or success around manifestation always boils down to your level of deservingness of the outcome that you're looking for. So in terms of the way this works with neuroplasticity is that you have to perform a certain action in the material world to bring what you want into your life. To perform that action with confidence, you have to have a certain thought process that tells you, if I go dating, I'm going to meet someone really nice and I'd be able to settle down and have a family. Versus, if I go dating, I'm going to meet a series of guys who are going to treat me really badly and it's going to damage my self-esteem even further. You can see the path that, you know, those two people are going to go down. And it's the same for asking for a raise, asking for promotion, setting out to start your own business, any sort of health or fitness goals. And so behind that thought process will be a set of beliefs that may be conscious, but may be subconscious as well. So you do not even know that that's what you believe about yourself that is starting off the thought process that is either, either preventing you or allowing you with trust and faith, you know, to take a healthy risk. So if you're able to dig down to that underlying belief, that's when you can do really powerful work to affect your manifestation. And whatever the particular phrase tends to be, it usually does equate to inability to manifestation is because I don't believe I deserve that.